Welcome back to Anatomy Classes and we are going to do with the osteology of individual bones. Uh, in my previous session I have done uh, osteology of maxilla and mandible which are the individual bones and these individual bones are very important in for dental students and uh, often asked in uh, osteology viva and today we are going to learn about uh, frontal bone. So here is the frontal bone. The frontal bone in Latin, frons means forehead, so it forms the major for part of forehead and it is present in the anterior side forehead articulating posteriorly with the parietal bones. What we are seeing is the external surface of the frontal bone. External surface, this part is called as the squamous part of the frontal bone and which has identified by two protuberances called as frontal eminence or frontal tuber or frontal tuberosities present on the either side where the ossification begins in the frontal bone and the margins here on the either side are the supraorbital margins and the notch is the supraorbital notch sometimes it may be a separate foramen and supraorbital vessels and nerves pass through this notch And frontal surface is separated from the orbital part by supraorbital margins. Just above the supraorbital margins, the prominent part here above to it are called superciliary arches which are related to eyebrows. The center smooth area with slight protuberance is known as glabella. And here is the anterior and the inferior side it is a rough margin which has got a projection called nasal spine and which articulates with the nasal bones to form nasal bridge. And laterally, the frontal bone has got a projection process which is called as the zygomatic process of the frontal bone which articulates with the frontal process of zygomatic bone. And if we trace the upper margin of the zygomatic uh, process it continues to form two lines which are called as temporal lines superior temporal lines and inferior temporal lines below the temporal lines this area is called as temporal surface of frontal bone this is the inferior surface of the frontal Inferiorly the two plates are here, these are called orbital plates or orbital pla part of frontal bone and in between the two plates we can see the irregular air sinuses which are ethmoidal air sinuses articulates in the hair with the ethmoid bone to form the roof of the nasal cavity. This is the internal surface of the frontal bone. It is irregular. Internal surface is irregular because uh, it is related to uh, gyra and sulci of the brain. So which forms an elevations and depressions here causing irregularity. And center of it is identified by a crust which is called frontal crust. Frontal crust continues above as the sulcus, superior sagittal sinus. And in the center, the frontal crust here ends up forming a blind foramen which is called as foramen cecum and sometimes it may be patent where a nasal vein uh, communicates with the superior sagittal vein. And this is the crista galli and cribriform plate of ethmoid bone. So ethmoid bone articulates with the frontal bone forming a notch here which is called as ethmoid notch. And the margins on the either side of the frontal articulates with the lesser wing of the sphenoid and laterally it articulates with the greater wing of the sphenoid. The rest of the margin posteriorly is called as parietal margin because it articulates with the parietal In few individuals the frontal bones may be uh, separated by a suture which is called as metopic suture present in 10% of the individuals. If this metopic suture is persistent even in the adult life, 
uh, it won't cause any physiological problems but it is important to know uh, clinically to differentiate it from the fractures in x-rays the term frontal bone it is uh, derived from uh, latin word uh, that is frons which means forehead because it forms the major part of forehead here is the external surface or the anterior surface of the frontal bone showing the squamous part and below the orbital part the squamous and orbital part are separated by a margin which are which is called as supra orbital margin supra orbital margin forms the margin of the orbit bony orbit and if we see along the supra orbital margin at the junction of medial 1/3 and lateral 2/3 there is a notch which is called as supra orbital notch sometimes it may be a separate foramen which is called as supra orbital foramen structures passing through the supra orbital notch or supra orbital foramen are supra orbital vessels and nerves about to the supra orbital margin there is a slight bony elevation which is related to eyebrows called as superciliary arches and the gap the, between the smooth area between two superciliary arches which is more prominent and elevated called as glabella and the frontal squamous part anteriorly it is identified by two prominences on the either side which are called as frontal protuberance or frontal tuberosity or frontal tuber and the ossification of the frontal bone begins at this frontal protuberance and the frontal bone develops bilaterally as two separate bones in the beginning and these two bones are joined by a suture in the midline which is called as metopic suture and metopic suture uh, it gets ossified be before 8 years of age and where sometimes the metopic suture remnant can be seen in the lower part of it in adults and in some adults in 10% of individuals this metopic suture may be a remnant and it may be present so in 10% it is present and uh, physiologically this metopic suture doesn't make any difference but clinically it is important to differentiate it from the fractures during radiological uh, diagnosis and on the either side the projections are called as zygomatic process of frontal bone which articulates with the frontal process of zygomatic bone to form a zygomatic arch and if we trace the upper border of the zygomatic process it makes a curved line which is called as temporal line and temporal line further if we trace in the whole skull it divides into two lines a superior temporal lines and inferior temporal lines superior temporal lines gives attachment to temporal fascia and inferior temporal line gives attach and along with the temporal surface it gives attachment to temporalis muscle inferiorly if we see this is the external or the anterior surface the anterior surface inferiorly it has got the serrated margin and having a small sharp projection which is called as nasal spine nasal spine articulates with the nasal bones below to form the bridge of the nose so that is about the anterior surface or external surface of the frontal here is the lateral surface of the frontal bone where we can see the squamous thin plate of the frontal bone which is called as the squamous part of the frontal bone and laterally we can appreciate the zygomatic process which articulates with the frontal process of zygomatic bone and the glabella the prominence in the midline is seen here and here is the inferior internal surface internal surface and including the inferior side of the frontal bone internally if you see the frontal bone it has got a lot of irregularities uh, because it is related to the gyri and sulci of brain and in the middle we can appreciate a groove Uh, which is called as sagittal sulcus where superior sagittal sinus is lodged in the sag sagittal sulcus and margins of this sagittal sulcus gives attachment to fox cerebri and if it is sagittal sulcus it forms an elevation in the midline which is called as frontal crest which also gives attachment to fox cerebri
on the either side laterally we can see the orbital part of the frontal bone orbital part of the frontal bone has got again superior and inferior surface a uh, superior surface of the orbital part will form the floor of the anterior cranial fossa and uh, it it is related to the frontal lobe of brain along with the meninges and inferior surface of the orbital plate forms the roof of the orbit major part of the roof of the orbit and in the midline there is a u shaped uh, depression that is a notch which is called as ethmoidal notch where ethmoidal bone articulates and if we turn inferiorly here we can see the air cells or air sin uh, sinuses which are called as ethmoidal canals anterior middle and the posterior ethmoidal canals are seen and this part articulates with the ethmoid bone that is the cribriform plate of ethmoid bone through which ethmoidal vessels and nerves pass through and olfactory nerve also passes through and laterally the a uh, frontal bone articulates here with the posteriorly it articulates with the parietal bone so it is called parietal margin and if we trace down inferiorly the lateral side inferiorly it articulates with the greater wing of sphenoid bone ossification of the frontal bone uh, frontal bone gets ossified uh, by two primary centers which appears at the frontal protuberance during eighth week of intrauterine life and uh, they form a, a gap between the frontal bone and parietal bone uh, uh, just before birth and after birth it is present it is called as uh, anterior fontanella and which gets closed uh, one and a half years after birth and initially the two frontal bones are separated by metopic suture and metopic suture gets ossified usually by eighth year after birth so this is all about the frontal bone uh, i hope you all like this session like share subscribe and press the bell button for further notifications